Let's hear about the ups and downs of tracking an animal and some tips to increase your chance of recovery. The biggest thing, when you find the blood, look at that blood, kind of, you know, judge it from that a little bit. Is it bright red blood? Does it look like lung blood or heart blood? Is it real dark, like liver blood? If it's dark, you want to back out of there as soon as you can. If you track that deer very far and you don't find him, and you, it's where you can back out and come back the next day or four or five hours later with some help, do that. Don't take a chance of jumping that deer. If you jump a deer one time that he's bedded down, you'd be amazed at how far they can run and how much blood they have in them. I mean, I've tracked them for a long, long ways, and you think, well, he's, he's there's no way he can be alive. There's no blood left in him. But you'd be shocked how far they can go. And the further you have to track him, the less chances you are of finding him. You know, as far as tracking an animal goes, basically what you want to do is leave that area as undisturbed as you possibly can. You want to go in there, hopefully just yourself, maybe yourself and something that your companion that's with you, and try not to disturb the ground as much. If you've got to call a dog in, the dog, the human scent that you have is not good for the dog. So you basically, you want to leave that area as undisturbed as you possibly can before that dog gets in there and tracks that deer. I think a dog, if you've got access to a dog, to me, it's about the best way you can possibly track a deer. Now, if you've got a great blood trail and you've just got blood everywhere, well, more than likely the deer's not going to be real far. But if you're just not sure the hit, you're not sure exactly how good it is, you're, you know the deer ran a certain distance and then you lost track of where it was, or it was dark and you're just not sure, I think a dog can be a great option. Once that dog gets wind of that deer, it basically is gonna follow it all the way to it. And then if it's wounded, the dog can stay on the deer, the, the dog's handler can move in and make the uh, proper kill shot, or hopefully find the deer dead on the trail. Unfortunately, sometimes bad shots happen and you end up recovering the deer after the meat is spoiled, or sometimes not at all. Every year, I know the pain of somebody that sits in, in a camp with, with a missed animal or a, or a slightly wounded animal or even a mortally wounded animal we just can't find. It happens. If you hunt that much, you're going to do it. I mean, that's a broken record. We say it so much. We say it every year. You know, Kentucky deer come in, I made a bad shot, I shot too soon, I shot low. Thankfully, I made such a bad shot, the animals was back on the camera in, in three days. Uh, but in, in some cases, if you find guts, the deer's probably gonna die. You know, I mean, you're, you just gotta find him. And, and you know, you may find him before the meat spools, you may not find him until spring turkey season. Uh, it's painful, you know, you can, see, you can see it in people's eyes, you can hear it in their voice. And, a true hunter and conservationist, they don't ever want to see that. You know, losing a deer is just part of hunting. It's not something we plan for, it's not something we want, but it's just something that can happen because it's it's an animal and, and things, you just can't control everything that happens in situations. When you're on a target range, you can make a perfect shot, but when you're in a hunting blind, things are happening, it all happens too fast. And my biggest recommendation is, is practice, practice, practice. Because what happens is, is when you go into that situation, all the chips are down, everything, I mean, you know, you're breathing hard, you're, you're thinking about it, everything can, anything that can go wrong, typically will go wrong. So you try to practice enough to where you can make the shot when you need to.